Good morning, good morning. We are here on April the 16th of 2020. Reading in Joshua chapter 13 and 14 today. And I just, you know, took a few moments this morning to reflect to God and, and to tell him how grateful I am that through this pandemic, through this time when so much fear is in the atmosphere, panic, uh, you know, death and sickness. Um, I'm so grateful that he has used this one year daily Bible, this daily Bible that Tom and I've read for uh, 18 years, best we can tell, um, a daily, just to, you know, wake up every morning, kind of the same routine, read an Old Testament portion, a New Testament, a Psalms and a Proverbs, that here we are in 2020, and and daily he he has tidbits in here that energizes our faith, that chases away fear, that encourages us, that keeps a vision for tomorrow and the future alive inside of us, and reminds us daily of how much he loves us and the plan that he has for us and not to give up and on and on daily every single day I don't I don't think I've missed a day that I haven't been able to find those little tidbits in here all the way back to the first of the year and it's been different this year I mean again God wasn't surprised by this coronavirus at all he wasn't surprised by our response to it. He, There's nothing about any of this that surprised him. And he prepared us and prepared our hearts and, and had already embedded these messages inside of his word for us. But he also had Im, Im, already embedded his message inside of our heart so that at the right moment, at the right time, it's reactivated and it comes alive for us. And today is no exception. So we're reading, um, yesterday we talked about the battles, you know, the, the, it, they'd entered into the promised land, the, the land flowing with milk and honey. And today I'll remind you that as I read, the land represents whatever promise God has given us in our life for today. Um, because there are promises that are alive for our purpose today. What we're supposed to accomplish this day, this period of time, this season in our life, there, that, that's the promise. It's, it's the hope for tomorrow that keeps us going. And uh, so when you read about the land, you're reading about promises for our promise today. And, and today... Joshua continues on. So they, they won all those battles yesterday, or I say yesterday, it was in yesterday's reading. And then here we are in Joshua 13, verse 1. When Joshua was an old man, when Joshua was an old man, the Lord said to him, you're growing old and much land remains to be conquered. I hope that spoke to you the way it spoke to me this morning. After all that, after all this, that's his promise that there's still much to be done. <laughs> even, even when we're old, you know, as long as we, we still have breath, he still has purpose inside of us. Joshua was old. Now, the other thing that stuck out to me today, not just with Joshua, but also with Caleb, because we get to read about Caleb today, is very similar to what happened with Moses. Remember, I've emphasized this over and over again because it's speaking to me. Moses was 120 years old when God told him it was his time that he was going to, the physical body was going to die. And he told him to, climb the mountain and the bible says that his eyes weren't dim and his physical strength was such as in his youth well here's joshua <laughs> and the lord told him you're growing old so joshua was up in years we know that caleb was 85 because it gives us that number in today's reading 
Joshua had, I don't know who was older. I don't, I didn't look it up. I don't, I don't know. Was Joshua older than Caleb? Was Caleb older? Doesn't really matter. I, here's what I believe. They both were in their 80s. You know, today, if we are in our 80s, we believe that we're just crippled and, you know, hunched over and can barely get by. And, you know, there's those of us out there that may believe we're going to be in a wheelchair or on a walker or our eyesight's going to be bad. And because we believe the lies. Here, here we are. God himself is saying, Joshua, you're growing older, but there's much land to be conquered. Now, when he talked that to him, He's talking about battles again. He's not talking about, well, do good, son, if you can get up those three steps to get into your house. No, he's saying, get ready, man of God. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. Don't believe the lie that our physical body has to fail us. It's a lie. <laughs> anyway, but... The other part of it is the timing of today, the timing of what's going on today. Little by little, more and more in the news media, there's talk in America about releasing the shelter to home, allowing people to go back to work, allowing the small businesses to open back up, to try to get the economy back. The, the focus is shifting somewhat off of the coronavirus onto recovery, onto what the next step is, that in my mind is represented here by saying there's still much land to be conquered. And, and so right smack dab in the middle of this um, stay at home order, the shelter in, in place orders uh, on the news last night, what little bit of news I watched, they're extending it. So bear with me. I know it sounds like I'm contradicting myself, but I'm not. Well, I, I'm not any more than what they are contradicting themselves. <laughs> um, that they're saying, oh, we're, we're going to extend it to May the 3rd or May the 6th. I think is May the 6th is the, is the, what I'm hearing here in Oklahoma is, is the shelter in place will be extended to May the 6th. So that's longer than what they originally said all the while. Oh, but we're talking about opening things back up and we're going to get back to normal. And there are folks that I'm seeing more and more and more sitting at home under the shelter at home orders going, I am so tired of this. I'm so weary. And they might as well be saying, I've grown so old. I don't have any energy. My physical body is growing weak. And then boom, here it is. You may be thinking you're growing old, but there's much land to be conquered. Once again, Boom, there it is. There's our encouragement. There's our purpose. There's our, oh, wow. Yes, there's more, Lord. There's more for us. <laughs> um, and then a promise. Verse um, six. Uh, God is speaking again to Joshua. He's just told him, you, there's going to be more war. You're going to have to conquer more land. You've got to, you've got to take more land. And, and then he tells him how he's going to do that in verse 6. I, God says, myself will drive these people out of the land ahead of the Israelites. Oh, man. Um, I, I, wow. <laughs> God's going to do it. So, so be sure to give this land. So there's that word again, give. Be sure to give. Be sure to give. Are you giving? Are you giving? I, I listened to a wonderful Bible study this week that just re-emphasized everything we've all been talking about. And, and, and that is that we have to pray. We have to seek God. We have to serve. Be sure to serve. Who are you serving? You, you know, you can't be out and about serving right now. So serve those that are there amongst you. Who's in your home that you can serve? Serve and then give. Now's the time to give. When the temptation is the greatest to say, oh, I got to have every penny. I've got to have every, I've got to have every toilet paper roll. I've got to have, no, 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 no. This is the time to give. And right here, it, it, it says it again. So be sure to give. So wait a minute. You mean, wait, wait, wait. Joshua's in charge of all of this. He's been in charge of all this. I mean, we, we read yesterday at minimum of 15 kingdoms 
That means there was 15 territories of land that he physically went in and, and trained up an army, army and led an army and went in and destroyed all of the inhabitants, all of the resistance to keep them from owning that land. And what does Joshua do? He says, oh, there's my rolls of toilet paper. Here, let me hoard them all up. There's my, oh, that land is mine. This land is mine. Oh, we conquered this, so this is mine. No, he didn't. Every single time. And Joshua gave, and Joshua gave, and Joshua gave. I, I didn't see. Now, I'm not trying to be very detailed here. I'm just telling you off the top of my head. I don't even see where Joshua kept any for himself at all. I mean, he may have. But if he did, that's not the focus here. That's my whole point. Joshua wasn't doing all this to hoard up treasures for himself. He was just simply obeying God. And he was following the leadership of God. So be sure to give. So all of this that you conquer, all of this, you know, so you go out every week and you work and you work and you may be digging ditches for a living and you may sweat and you may be using your physical muscles and you're so tired at the end of the day and you come in and at the end of two weeks, oh, here's my paycheck. It's mine. I've earned it. It's my, it's my sweat of the brow. It's all God's. It's all God's. If he tells you to give it all away, you better give it all away. It's his anyway. And, and you know what? Joshua knew that. This was the land flowing with milk and honey. Joshua knew where his help came from. Joshua knew where his resources come from. Joshua knew who was going to provide toilet paper. And I, I don't mean to make light of that. I understand clearly that the people who went out and hoarded up all that toilet paper was in fear. They were in bondage to that fear. They were in a panic. But see, here's the deal. I say it because every last one of us has been tempted with that same fear these days, have been tempted Oh, do I have my pantry stocked up? Oh, is there enough food in my refrigerator? What about my freezer? Is, that's the reason I use it is, you know what? That's a familiar spirit that's been traveling this land for the last four months. And so that's not what we give into. And there's many of us that has not opened that door, but there's been so many more that did open it. So I use it to make a point, not because I'm making light of it, but quite frankly, because I'm battling that we will not go there. That's not God's intention for us to go there. Um, that's right, Brother Trey. I sure enjoyed your singing this morning, brother. I uh, uh, left a message. Would you please private message me with your ministry's address? I sure would appreciate it, Brother Trey. I love your singing to Jesus. Keep it going, brother. Okay, so... Um, um, so there's, this is the message to all of us in the middle of this pandemic, there's still much land that remains to be conquered. God's not finished with you yet. God's not finished with you yet. Um, this is a territory that remains. We're going to go there. God's going to take us and then we're going to give <laughs> as we conquer, we give as we conquer the next the next thing inside of us, okay, Lord, get this out of me. And we get, we, we, we rise up, we, we overcome whatever we were in bondage to, whatever it is that holds us back. And we, and we conquer that. Then we give and we conquer that. We give thanks. We conquer that and we praise him. We conquer that and we give. And then what happens is our hearts get so sensitive to him that we hear him. We hear him. We don't have to strain Lord, was that your voice or was that, is that, who am I listening? Which, which phone am I answering? Is it you, is that you on the line, Lord? Or we, we get so sensitive that then it just becomes second nature. And we just, it is who we are because it's him abiding in us and we abide in him. And, and we don't think twice about it anymore. We don't think twice about paying off somebody's mortgage. We don't think twice about, paying the widow's 
utility bills for such a time as this. We don't think twice about being in the grocery store and seeing, seeing somebody in need and paying their bill in the grocery store. We don't think twice about blessing somebody in the restaurant and paying for their meal. And, and we don't stop and think, okay, now let me add up. Is that part of my tithe or is that part of my... We, that's who we are. It's, it's who we are. <laughs> oh. So verse 10, um, just, just little tidbits as I lead on into, uh, lead on into Luke, but I think, believe this is Joshua 14, 10. Now, as you can see, the Lord has kept me alive and well. Hmm. April the 16th of 2020. Wonder why I highlighted that. As you can see, the Lord has kept me alive and well. Hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Those are shouting words. Do you understand? Those are shouting words. Those are promises. The Lord has kept me alive and well. <laughs> and this was Caleb that was actually speaking. And once again, he's 85 years old right here in the, in the, the, the part of the reading. I'm talking about uh, uh, Joshua verse 14 and 10. He says, now, as you can see, the Lord has kept me alive and well, Caleb said, as he's promised. For all these 45 years since Moses made this promise to give me this land, even while Israel wander, wandered in the, de in the wilderness, today I am 85 years old. Now listen, are you listening? I am as strong now as I was when Moses sent me on that journey. 45 years later, and he's as strong as he was back then. Hmm. 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 But you know what? He didn't remain as strong as he was back then because he retired at 65 years old and he pulled up his rocking chair and he sat in front of the TV and he watched all of his favorite shows 12 hours a day and went to bed and woke up and sat in his rocking chair and watched all of his favorite shows 12 hours a day. This man worked. This man had purpose. This man had things he had to accomplish for God himself every single day, every single day. And because he did the work of the Lord, his body was strong. See, we don't just get to just say it. Oh, I'm going to be 85 years old and be as strong as I was at 45. You don't get to just say it. Faith without works is dead. We have to have the faith, first of all, the belief that, oh, I can remain strong. And then we have to do it. And it will be led by the Holy Spirit to do so. <laughs> and then Luke chapter 18. Wow. Uh, I mean, just again, the first, the first scripture right here. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. Now tell me. That wasn't written for April the 16th of 2020. Always pray, never give up. Always pray, never give up. God is still God. <laughs> and then verse 14, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalt exalted. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the reminders of the truth. The truth. Thank you for the truth. And then uh, verse 16, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children, who are like these children. Oh Lord, that we should come to you humbled as though we're a child and we listen with the ears of a child and the innocence of a child. Ooh, mm, mm. Thank you, Lord. For, for the encouragement once again today. Once again today. We're yours, Father. We're yours. Here we are. Use us right here in the middle of Sky Took, Oklahoma, in the middle of my home. Use me, Lord. Use me. Use me. Use us. You're on here because that pull is there. That draw. He's drawing you nearer, closer, because he's got a purpose He's got a purpose. First of all, he just wants to love you. He does love you. 
but he's asking you to open your hearts to let him in with his love. And then let him in to the point that it overflows and you can't help yourself. The love spills out. And the love spills out even when it's enemy sitting next to you. Even it, when it's somebody who's attacked you, you still love them because you can't help it. You're so full of God's love, it just spills out. It just spills out. People get around you and they say, oh, what is it that's so different about you? You're, you're different. When I left my job in government service and I, my last day there, I went around saying goodbye to people and I'll never forget this one lady. I'd already come in, finished my business, said my goodbyes, thanked her for helping me in my job and, and had my hand on the doorknob when she said, Miss Elizabeth, do you have just a second? And I turned and I said, sure. She said, there's something different about you. I, 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 can I ask you a question? I said, sure. She said, you're a Christian, aren't you? And I smiled. I said, I am. She said, I knew it. There's something different about you. Just, just let him fill you so full of love that they, 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 they may not be able to put their finger on it, but they know that there's something different. Let your light shine right in the middle of this pandemic as this virus is evaporating away in the kingdom of God. It can't stay. It hasn't got into the kingdom of God anyway. I mean, it can't come anywhere near us, but don't get me started on that or I'll keep going. Love you guys so much.